Hey guys, today we're taking a look at the latest release from Kotobukiya, the HMM Redra. We're going to unbox the kit, I'll show you the gimmicks and how well it poses, and we'll compare it to its Tomy counterpart as well, of course. Let's take a look. RoboShop Alright, you know how we do. We're going to start with the box and uh, can I just obviously start by saying that this is a freaking awesome uh, box art illustration here. We have um, the uh, Redra, Redler, I'm getting to that in a second, uh, in the front here sort of diagonally across the, uh, across the box. I really like how the foot is breaking the, uh, the panel border here uh one that's been hit and that's crashing and of course the elephant or should i say the brontosaurus in the room here being the uh the two ultrasauruses here um which i'm sure everyone's going to say that this has to mean 100 percent now that there's going to be an hmm ultrasaurus we know that's not true but you know one can dream um they're also kind of oddly non-standard i just noticed something else aside from i mean the obvious is that you have this um platform here on the back that serves as a runway that's completely different from what it looks like on the uh on the tomi model but also the cannons are different they've been moved closer to the front i think uh and also obviously there should be four of these and not just two so uh yeah, this is obviously a fictional version of the Ultrasaurus that's never going to materialize, but it's just it's just damn cool that it's on this that it's on this illustration, let's be honest. Uh about the name, real quick, before I flip this box over. This is the katakana for the name. And now some of you might be wondering where this is coming from, because of course the NJR version, and I think also the Hasbro version that came out 20-ish years ago. Uh, it was spelled Redler. Uh, the thing is, though, that first of all, Redra was also the way um, it was spelled on the uh, on the OJR box. And if you look at the katakana here, this is the Zoid's actual name in Japanese, and this actually reads Redra. Redler. I'm not going to bore you with the phonology lecture. If you know, you know, and if you don't know, you don't care. But if you know how Japanese phonology works, Redler and Redra is actually the same thing. It's just two variant spellings of this here. And I guess they've gone back to the uh, to the OJR spelling, uh, which makes sense because these are actually the OJR colors. Um, and uh, if you want to get cute about the name, let's just say it should be called Zulcon anyway, right? So anyway, um, it says here is Anibis, which is also spelled differently, Empire version. Um, and uh, for some, this is the 54th HMM already, if you can believe it. On the side here, we have this illustration that I think we, uh, the, the, I think that was the preview concept art. A um, whole lot of Japanese text that I'm not going to bother with. Uh, the side here has uh, the front illustration again in here. As per usual, we have photos of the completed model with um pointing out you know some of well there aren't really any gimmicks but uh what they're showing here is that you can replace these thrusters with uh these pieces here that look more like uh the caps that you would expect to go on joints uh strangely enough you apparently you can't do the same thing on the front because these are like jet intakes which you know on the uh on the motorized model it's just caps front and back right i'll show you that later when we do comparison pictures what they're showing here is that there's two different types of um two different types of weapons that you can uh that you can put on the wings um there's another uh picture of the model here and uh yeah that's it let's see what's inside let me get the lid off here, and we have a whole mess of pink parts. Well, pinkish red, anyway. Um, some mechanical stuff. I'll get these out of the bags in a second. Uh, the second bag 
containing more of the mechanical stuff. This is the wings, which colors look from what I recall really exactly like the OJR model. Um, this is interesting, sort of an in-between thing between rubber, uh, I mean, poly caps and, and, uh, and mechanical pieces. Uh, more mechanical parts. This is um, more stuff that goes on the wings. And here we have, okay, I'm not going to get this out of the back, so let's take a look right now. We've got two clear parts here where <clears throat> I'm going to have to check the instructions to see where these go. Uh, the Zoids core, of course, and a pilot that you assemble. Um, and here we have these uh, cannons that are shown on the uh, box. They seem to be in two halves, which is going to mean big, fat, nasty seam line. And here we have the feet and some other stuff. And uh, of course, um, a very nice, wow, okay, this, <laughs> this is really cool. A very nice sheet of water slide decals, which this seems to be pretty much just the OJR sticker sheet um, in water slide decal form. At least I hope these are water slides. Let's get them out of the bag real quick. Um, good job cutting the bag open. There we go. Yeah, they're water slides. <laughs> it's just a water slide version of an OJR sticker sheet. Like it's an Eva's logo uh, emblems in two different sizes and the EZ and the B004 and uh, just all the stuff you'd expect on a proper Zoids kit. Awesome. Awesome. Um, okay, let's take a quick look at the instructions first. I want to know where those clear parts go. Let me get that out of the way, hopefully in such a way where it's not gonna fall off the table on the side here. There we go. Um, so, concept art as usual. Picture of the whole thing. This is for parts replacements if you live in Japan. Uh, parts list here. Uh, the build starts with the head, uh, continues with the neck here. Uh, this is the torso. You work your way back towards the tail and wings go together like this. And then I am curious to see where it shows that you can, um, that you can swap the thruster. Oh, here you go. See? This is what's this is what's on the back of the box here. You can either put these uh, thrusters on, or you can just put caps on. This is um, this is one of those jet intake pieces, and it says here that you can swap it for a for a cap. So you can build it so it looks exactly like the Tomy model, or you can get these you know these like parts here to to actually look like jet engines. That's really cool. So the build continues here, They're not that interesting. Um, and then we have uh, the two different, the two different cannons that you, that you can put on there. Mercifully, you see here the barrel um, and the long barrel on these here as well actually is one part. It's just the main casing uh, of the cannon that comes in two halves. Um, I suspect that's still going to leave quite a bit of a seam line, although on this one it seems to be masked reasonably well, not so much on this one. But the barrel's not going to have a seam line on it, and this front piece here actually sticks on here, so it's not that bad. And then finally it shows that you put the pilot in last, thank you Kotobukiya. Um, more, uh, more concept art, here's how you attach it to a... Uh, to an action base and then we have a painting guide that I'm not going to follow and instructions on how to put on water slides. So that's it. Um, let's get a look at these parts here. Um, I'm just going to film myself making a mess of opening these bags, no doubt. 
So first of all, we have the A sprue here. Lots and lots of detail though. These go on the wings. A is a double sprue. Next we have L. I'm just gonna go through these as they lie here if you guys don't mind. Um, and if you do mind, there's no way you can stop me now because this isn't a live stream. Ha 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 ha. The, uh, hold up. Um, there's some gray, silvery gray pieces here. Uh, these are the jet intakes and thrusters. Whole mess of detail here. This actually has like, it actually looks like a proper jet intake. It's not just the pointy part here. Um, also, of course, this is a sprue that's doubled. Uh, this one I'm curious about because because this is yeah um it says j no no it's not polycaps this seems to be yeah it's abs interesting and these are parts that you would usually expect to be polycaps but i guess um we'll find out in a minute but this is uh, this is an HMM without polycaps. I think the only other example I can think of is the Cannon Tortoise. Um, anyway, uh, some ABS parts here. These are the clear parts for the wing, and the Obi Wan Kenobi. Ha <laughs> ha Sorry, couldn't resist. Ah, uh, they look a little lighter than the um, the original red. Redra, actually. It's a very nice smoky collar, but definitely not exactly the same. Um, although I, I will say I only have an, o, uh, an OER uh, Zolcon to compare this to, but I'm pretty sure it's the exact same colors as the Japanese version. Uh, and that's the, can, uh, the canopy. <laughs> um, now, this bag doth contain it. Um, D, which is, this is like the undercarriage of the tail. This is probably the belly. Uh, everything littered with detail. This goes on the wings. Uh, another air intake grill here. Lots and lots of nice little detail. Absolutely everywhere. That's the way we like it. Uh, another ABS sprue with more joints. And then we have surprisingly few of the reddish pink parts. Um, this is, yeah, I think, pretty sure the head's a little bigger than on the original. Tail looks smaller by comparison. Well, we're gonna do we're gonna do a comparison, so we'll find out. Uh, what I definitely want to point out, though, is that while the overall shape of this head looks very true to the original, they've added a whole bunch of panel lines here on top, and this is new as well. I think this might be there on the original as well. Of course, you know if you've built a Tomy Redler, Redra, Zolcon, uh, this all looks very familiar. Just almost everything has added panel lines which is really cool and which is how we like it same general shapes and proportions but more detail um here we have more parts for the wings this looks to be the neck here this is the jet engine thing that holds the wings together tons and tons and tons of detail this is going to be a lot of fun to paint um and then we have <clears throat> the caps, which are not rubber caps. Get this out of the way here so that you can see what I'm showing you. And furthermore, this is a lot more parts than I expected. <laughs> Seriously, like I don't think I don't think the Godos has like half as many parts. Uh, that's the blade that goes in the tail, and these are the claws that go on the feet. Also, you know, more clutter here, which is good. Uh, these grill things. This goes 
um, on the chest. I think sort of detail in between sort of the, the, the grill parts as well here too. Then we have the uh, cannons that go on the wings. Can we take a moment as well to just appreciate the fact that while the Tomizoids for the last, I don't know how many years, have had fewer and fewer armaments, the Kotobukiya version of the Redra actually has more guns than the Tomi version because the Tomi version didn't come with these. They look like, at least these here, they look sort of like HMM adapted version of old Tomi weapons, but I'm gonna have to gonna have to take a poke through some of my old Tomizoids to see what they actually compare to. And uh, I believe that's it. Yeah, I mean, of course, you know, we've got this bag with the pilot and the clear parts here, but I'm not going to take these out of the bags. It's not necessary because what needs to happen next is that I'm going to get this guy built so that we can check out what it looks like compared to the real one and how well it poses and just generally, I, I just want to get building, so leave me alone. All right, let's do gimmicks first, uh, and then we're going to look at posability. First of all, we have an opening cockpit here that opens forward uh, the same way as on the motorized Tomy version. We also have the Zoids core here that pulls out like it does on most Kotobukiya Zoids. Sits relatively tight, but not too tight, and this thing also, mercifully, unlike on some other models, doesn't immediately fall apart when you touch it. Um, it has, of course, this uh, blade here on the tail that folds out, just like the Tomy model. What's kind of funny about this piece is um, there's a hydraulic piston molded into it at the bottom here that you can't see even when you look in like this. I'm really not sure why they included that, but it's there. Um, and finally, we have these flaps here underneath the rear thrusters that I guess are supposed to, I don't know, help it change direction or something. Uh, they look cool, um, so there's that. Um, and uh, yeah, that's really it as far as gimmicks go. While I'm talking about the uh, thrusters though, they're right here. Here are the rear exhausts and here are the air intakes that I mentioned in the unboxing. These look really good. Um, I'm going to, you know, do a comparison picture with the caps on here. But uh, I don't think I'll be building it with the caps on the wings. Uh, I really like the way this looks. Uh, what I want to show you as well, though, is how you attach one of these wing weapons here. Which there's this, whoops, <laughs> pin here um, that holds the wings together. And that is where this pin goes that has a peg on the top that this gun attaches to. Let's do this first. And then you plug this in here and you put the uh, cap on at the bottom and boom there's um like i said in the unboxing there's two uh there's two different weapons and of course you know they go on both wings i'm just going to show you this one here uh yeah that's how you attach that but to be perfectly honest i'm not i'm not in love with this uh, don't know if i'll be building it this way for the painted version but We'll see. Uh, if you take off the weapon, what you need to do is you need to put this pin back in, which to be honest is a bit annoying because it has a sort of a lug on the side. Um, that means you, it only goes in one way, you can't rotate it. I just got kind of lucky. The last time I took it out, it took me like a minute or two to get it back in and it was really frustrating. So let's do posability. Um, first of all, the wings go down this far and up this far. This is uh, all the way folded and this is all the way extended. As you can see, there's this arm here reminiscent of the mechanism on the Tomy model that actually drives the wings up and down that they've included and it moves when you uh, fold the wing in and out. It's pretty cool. The problem with this is though that this is pretty much all plastic scraping against plastic. There's no gaps between the parts because there's no poly, poly caps. And so that's going to, I don't know how well this is going to work once it's painted. I'm very much afraid what I'm looking at is I'm going to have to decide on a pose for the wings and then uh, I'm going to have to leave them that way because this is probably just going to scrape all the paints off when you do this. 
Uh, next, uh, let's do the tail. Um, this is sort of uh, the basic pose where it's, you know, it looks like the Tomy tail. What you can do is you can, first of all, it moves up and down here on a hinge from here to here. Um, it rotates a little and it swings side to side about yay far. And then here you can sort of unhook it. Um, and then this moves a little as well. It's a bit weird because if you move it out too far, you can see the inside of the tail. And uh, I mean, this, I guess, this looks okay. Um, the way this is done, it's a pretty strange mechanism, is that, see, there's a hinge here, like so. And here it rotates side to side like this. Um, and it also spins here. Which is a really complicated mechanism that in the end doesn't really do all that much but you know i wanted to show it to you anyway the neck uh, moves from here which is sort of standard tomy pose all the way up here and it has a second joint here that allows you to do this uh which allows you to do this really cool pose that i think you've probably seen in some of the pictures where you know it's like this the down and just moving forward um, this also goes down all the way like this and it rotates ever so slightly uh, works much better for me than the tail because it really looks cool in pretty much any way you pose it uh, and then the head goes from here to here where it's actually not the horns bumping into the neck here that stops it from moving it's the joint itself it really won't go up any farther in this uh, it doesn't rotate, but it swivels side to side a little, which uh, I, I would have liked to see it go side to side, maybe a little farther, but, you know, in combination with the movement that you get out of the neck, you can get some pretty decent poses with this. Um, finally, the legs are also uh, surprisingly complex. It's one of the reasons why there's so many parts in this kit. First of all, the feet have these uh, moving toes here go this far and then they rotate here and they have a hinge that whoops allows them to go you know pretty much all the way like all the way like so and then here at the elbow which I don't know if that's the elbow or the heel but uh, we have this much movement no rotation and here the upper part is really interesting because there's this hinge here that allows you to do this which I think the purpose of that is that you can go from here to here where it's sort of closer in line with the torso um, which now you've probably noticed there's also a hinge here that allows you to move the legs out pretty far and of course they rotate here and they rotate here unsurprisingly uh, mechanically the uh, front and rear legs are exactly the same um, it's just this piece is a little longer on the front legs because they sit a bit higher up on the body so that you can, you know, pose it like this. Um, which brings me to maybe my only criticism of how posability here is there's so many joints in these legs and they're all very tight, which on the one hand is good because it means it'll actually hold poses. Uh, on the other hand though, it's, it's, I found it pretty difficult to just get it into a pose where all four feet are on the ground and it doesn't look awkward somehow. And also, the hinges here are ABS plastic. This piece in here and this with the, with the piston on it is also ABS. Uh, that's how they make this work, which on the one hand it's nice that there's no poly caps because it means less wear and tear over time and no broken polycaps like what you sometimes see on Kotobukiya models. But at the same time, again, it's just plastic scraping on plastic and it's pretty much gonna be fixed pose by the time it's painted, if you ask me. Anyway, I think that's it. I'm not forgetting anything, so let's move on to pictures. Right, so let's get the obvious comparison out of the way first. This is my European release Zolcon, but as far as I know, it's the same as the Japanese version. The first thing I think is worth noting is that the two are actually almost exactly the same size. The Kotobukiya kit is a little bigger, but really not by much. 
Mostly it's just the neck and the tail being a bit longer, as you can see from this angle. This also shows the added detail to the wings, and as it turns out, I was actually wrong about the clear parts. They're quite a bit darker on the Kotobukiya model. The armor isn't exactly the same color either, and I think in this picture you can actually tell it's a tiny bit darker, but it's extremely close. What you can also see here is that the Tomy version actually has pegs on the wings for the guns to attach and they're not in the same places where you attach the guns on the Kotobukiya version, which I think is a bit strange. Nothing wrong with the way they attach here though, it looks fine, here's one set of them. And here's the other. I actually think I like the smaller ones better, they just look less clunky and more like the Zoid could still fly with them. And while we're at it, here's a comparison to the Tomy guns that I think these are roughly based on, or more like inspired by, and really just the one with the tubes. These are weapons that came with a lot of the larger kits like the Death Star and the Gojulus, and it's pretty cool to see them resurrected here. Next, here's a closer look at the back with the thruster pieces replaced with caps. Looks totally fine too if you prefer the more classic look, but like I said, I think I'm going with the thrusters. And I think that about covers everything. So, do you need this kit? I'm gonna say yes. Yes, you do. Kotobukiya really did everything right with this one. It looks exactly like you'd want an HMM to look, you know, close to the original, but with just slightly sleeker proportions and more detail. Posability is nothing crazy, but as a result it also doesn't have any weird spindly looking connection points that look crappy and just exist so that you can contort the model in weird ways. It's super, super solid as well. If you're looking to build this unpainted and just pose it a bunch, I can guarantee you nothing will fall off and it'll hold a pose just fine. I also found very few pieces with excessively tight parts fit, but ask me about that again when I have to take it apart for painting, we'll see. So, unless you somehow hate the look of this Zoid, it comes with a 100% recommendation from me. In fact, I'd say this is the best HMM adaptation of a wind-up Zoid so far, and probably my new top recommendation for people who are looking to build their first Kotobukiya kit. It's easy to build, everything works, and the end result looks really good. I have no notes. More like this, please. Well, and that's it for this one. If you've watched this far, you might want to know why it's been so long since the last video, and I really don't have a particularly good explanation for you. I've just been super busy with my day job lately, and since nothing new has come out that I absolutely had to review, and I haven't had much free time, I didn't really get around to reviewing any of the old stuff I keep saying I want to review. Mostly I've been painting Warhammer models, actually, so maybe I should start doing videos about those, I don't know. So, up next will probably be the anniversary version of the Blade Liger. I've got that one on pre-order, as well as the Liger Zero and the cannons for this one, so... I'll still be reviewing pretty much every new Zoids kit that comes out, it just won't be as much as in the past, because, well, Zoids Wild is dead. Anyway, if you'd like to support me, I've got Patreon and PayPal links in the description, but just giving this video a like and sitting through the ads instead of skipping over them already helps me out a bunch. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end, be awesome to each other, and I'll see you in the next one.